Okay, we are live. <clears throat> oh, it's been a day. <clears throat> Last night I started to do a arrow, rest of my arrow video. So I'll be doing that later on tonight. I still have a, not a lot of space because I was making that video. So today there was a big movie, kind of, kind of big sale at my uh, local record shop at Atomic Records there in uh, Sydney. So what they do is they take all the DVDs, CDs, stuff like that. They put them on for like a buck each. And uh, there'll be like collectibles and stuff like that for like 2 or $3, that type of thing. Games and some games and that as well. So I picked up a bunch of stuff and my better half actually picked up something as well. So I'll show you what she got for her office first, which I think you'll like, if you're, especially if you're super geeky like we are. And uh, then we'll go from there. <clears throat> because I've got a lot of movies to show. i got some CDs, some collectibles, that type of thing. So my better half has like a bunch of like... Hey, Scalder has a bunch of collectibles in her office and like she's got a huge like Voltron and like she's got different things from like Lord of the Rings and different anime shows and stuff. And she's a big like Harlequin fan of that. So she picked up this today. This wasn't part of the sale. This was actually uh, what she grabbed. This was more of a full price thing. And so this is the Wonder Woman from the animated series, the Just League animated series, which is her... Uh, her personal favorite Wonder Woman. And let's see, do we go do movies or collectibles first? Let's do collectibles first and then we'll go into the movies. Hey, Livins. Uh, so, so, because we no longer have HMV here in uh, Canada, I saw this and I had to pick it up. I also am a big fan of the TV series, even though some people didn't like the way that it ended. And that is the Dexter Bobblehead, which is an HMV exclusive. Hey, Vinny, welcome, dude. You came just in time. Look, I got this. So this is the... Hey, Petey. I'm, I may have picked up some Hanna... I'll, I'll check in here. There may be some Hanna Barbera as well in here. We do need to get some more, though. Um, <clears throat> so this was the only one of these that they had. Uh, this was in a back room. We brought it out. Because um, I asked them if there's any other collectibles, which that was pretty cool of them. And um, I got that. So... I. Since the collectibles are smaller, I'll go through those first, and then we'll go to the movies and CDs and that, and games. So next up, I picked up this thing called a uh, puzzle block, and there was a couple of them. There was the Friday the 13th one. You can see some of the different things on there. And although uh, I was never a huge, huge fan of, of Hellraiser 3, I actually did grab the Hellraiser 3 puzzle block as well, Hell on Earth. Even though that, there's one scene here that looks, see that? That looks like it's from Howard's of Bloodlines. But uh, either way, cool, cool, cool. So we'll do the CDs next, and then we'll do the do the uh, the DVDs. So not a lot of CDs. E each, these each had their like original prices on them, but everything here was a dollar. So I um, picked up a few CDs. I haven't bought CDs in a while. I got a Hotel California by the Eagles, because I'm, I'm an Eagles fan. Uh, Rod Stewart's uh, As Time Goes By, The Great American Songbook, Volume 2. I wanted, there was a lot of CDs there. I wanted to get more, but uh, there was this, uh, there was a bunch of people in the way and I couldn't get there. I got this one for my better half. Uh, she's a huge Lord of the Rings fan, so I got her that uh, Return of the King soundtrack. Big Willie style. You said that one back in the day. Yes, I, I do. Do like Will Smith's music. Uh, Franz Ferdinand. Which, again, these are some I used to have, uh, but I no longer have. Crossroads, The Best of Bon Jovi. Uh, ABBA Gold. This is uh, Greatest Hits, so I'm an ABBA fan, guys. And I could not miss on picking out two soundtracks. I got Grease and Purple Rain, which are, in my thoughts, two of the best soundtracks that were ever made. Guys, so quiet. <clears throat> All right, let's go through some of the uh, the movies here. I grabbed stuff like kind of at random. Everything was a dollar here, so I picked up like TV shows and stuff like that too. Give them a shot, and like I, anytime I can find like a snapper case or uh, just uh, something else, I, I like MGM. Like I think Vinny collects MGM like I do, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I always grab things. So I grabbed Cannibal Run. <laughs> Annie Hall. I've got really weird music tastes. Zappacosta is a favorite of mine. I'm guessing nobody else knows who he is but me. 
Anyhow, uh, Weed Season 1. I really should get the whole series, but they had a season there. Ah, I got this one, like, I think once or twice. I got the gold collection, and I got the uh, the platinum collection, and I actually already had this one. So this is just a backup, and that is the Looney Tunes Spotlight Collection. I'm a really big fan of Looney Tunes. So anytime I ever, if I ever see any chop one claims, I don't actually. Street oh. I remember those shows, but I don't have any of them. Not this time around. Uh, it's always neat when I can find some different stuff there. I got the first season of Prison Break for a buck. I picked up, what is this? Oh, Don't Be Afraid the Dark. You know, I actually have never watched this. And I grabbed uh, Fender's Big Score with the lenticular cover. Could not pass up on that. I'm a Futurama fan. I know, there's been like a big thing about the booklets recently. I've seen like a, what's the website? Uh, is it Blu-ray.com, I think, that was like talking about that? So I think I got this uh, one already, but it, this would be like a backup anyway. So this is Clerks X. This is the uh, copy. And I'm going to open it up because we, uh, my better half had this and she lent it out to somebody. And when she got it back, like there was only one disc in like that was there uh and then i think i bought it i think i bought it again but i'm a huge fan of clerk so backup copies i always do that i know that's kind of insane but i do it anyway um i actually really like this one um and it's the two disc collector's edition oh really hey jesse uh i'm not there which is you know on a I liked it. <laughs> I grabbed Bratman, Bratman, Batman Brave and the Bold Season 1 Part 1. I actually really like this rendition of Batman. Um, I got to get the rest of these. I think the first episode of the pilot was with the Blue Beetle. I really like the fact that at the beginning of every, if you've never, ever seen this cartoon, it's like a team-up cartoon. Batman Brave and the Bold was a team-up comic back when I was a kid. Um, at the beginning of each one of these, Oh, I'm a huge fan of Bob Dylan, actually. Uh, there's like a, he's with a hero and, and he's fighting like a villain, but then it gets into the actual story, uh, you know, and then there's a different hero and a different villain. So it's was, it was always kind of a little like stinger at the beginning. It's really kind of cool. They have a really cool thing with uh, Aquaman. And there's this one joke um, where they're trying near the end of the series where they're trying to get the show canceled. So they get the guy that was in like a, Happy Days and, you know, played Roger in Happy Days and he was in, like, Married with Children and stuff like that and said, if we put him on the show, the show will get cancelled for sure. <clears throat> Which was just, like, not kid humor, but really neat. So, uh, I had, like, a... I got McClintock because I had this, like, disc, but it was, like, a feature-free one and this one actually has a, uh, has a bunch of features on it. So, uh, I grabbed that. Uh, I always grab these kind of cheesy, uh, these... One, so I got the horror cinema series. I don't know if there's anything here that I don't have. Uh, I think I got Black Dragons, uh, Dead Man Walk. Maybe I don't have that one. And Sound of Horror. I'm not quite sure if I own that one or not. Uh, 1964. So we'll we'll see on that. Pretty sure this is my second or third copy of Veronica Mars season one. I know I already have it, but I'm a huge Veronica Mars fan. I'll probably if I realize I got it and then I'll give the other one to my kids ah just two games to show you guys so I picked up NBA 2k17 for my Xbox because I'm baller like that and I grabbed Batman Arkham Origins because this is the only one that's not on uh, Xbox Game Pass I, I got the other three downloaded from there hey tummy that's because I never finished it uh, I, I had to delete it because I got like 10 minutes in and uh, we had to go out, so we I had to literally run. If you saw, if you were here live, you would see that I actually pretty much had to like eggs out, run. We had to go get some stuff for the cats. Um, so uh, I'll be doing that one today. Oh, tough ones I really want. I mean, it's going to take me a while before I get it. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's uh, it's one that I will uh, that I will pick up. So 
I don't think I got this one. So Swiss Family Robinson. I like these big box uh, Walt Disney collection things. I got to get the Love Bug one if I don't have it. This is one I'm proud of getting. I don't have the Blu-ray edition of this one yet, so I uh, grabbed the snapper case for Embrace of the Vampire. Now, when this movie came out, I rented this on VHS so many times. So many times. Uh, anybody oh, that's seen this movie knows exactly what I'm talking about. So, I grabbed some Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, 13 Spooky Tales Around the World. Oh, these, I just went to a sale. I, <laughs> I just came back from it. Like, these were all for a buck each. <laughs> Vinny, we have the same idea. And I'm not quite sure if this is like a compilation one or what the heck, but I think it's a compilation one. Grabbed Teen Titans Season 2, Volume 1. That's okay, dude. Uh, I got to get more of these. Does this have, I wonder if this has any of the uh, terror episodes on it. I grabbed one of the worst horror movie sequels I've ever seen because I don't have it. And that is I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. I think I've got the I Know What You Did Last Summer collection here, like, but I don't have it singular on its own. Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. That is an awesome idea. I grabbed the super cheesy Legacy Edition because I I got the 13 Ghost Scooby. That's a good one. Um, chiller with the worst, uh, you know, sidekick, the knickknack. So this is one of those old, old, you know, cheap Legacy ones. But I don't see Legacy around very much anymore, so I grabbed it. Alien from L.A. I uh, picked up as well because I wanted the single edition of that. Is it a good movie? Well, look. And from my boarding days, I don't think I'd be able to get on a skateboard uh, now, <clears throat> like, sensibly, but I got thrashing. And this actually has some features on it, like commentary and stuff like that. I'm trying to remember this film, but I really don't. I think this is the James Brolin one. Uh, James Brolin, Josh Brolin, right? Yeah, Josh Brolin. Yeah. And Robert Rusler. Whoa. Okay, Robert Rusler's in this, too. The Ambulance. I don't have that one yet. It's probably one of the only ones by uh, by that director that I don't have, actually. The DVD box set of Nightmare on Elm Street, Jesse, is the set. Uh, <clears throat> for, like, the longest time, it was the greatest horror set uh, <laughs> that was ever put out, uh, in, my, in my opinion. That was one to get. If You, you had to have it in your collection. I, I got the Blu-ray set, but I would never let go of my DVD set of the Nightmare on Elm Street. If that's that big box one. It's really nice. And the encyclopedia of, uh, in that, the, the bonus disc is excellent. So I grabbed this Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. I had this a long time ago, but I never got to watch it. And then it somehow got lost in a move. So this could be total crap, but I don't know. We'll check it out. So I actually, usually they have a lot of wrestling there, but they didn't this time around. Uh, so I only got one. And it's okay, what the hell happened there? Uh, and that is the best of Ra 2009. No, dude, it's, you're cool either way. Do not feel bad. You got Nightmare on Elm Street, the complete series. That is awesome. So I got these on blue, but I wanted the original DVDs. So I grabbed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because Stacey Hadiak, I think, is in this one. No, no, Jude Hogue's in this one, actually. It says Haddock's in the, in the other ones. Uh, and I got Secret of the Ooze. Go Ninja, Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. <laughs> so, I I picked this up. because It was a dollar. Not quite sure if I'll ever watch it. Uh, especially now, because... Okay. <laughs> but The Cosby Show's season three. Um... I'll be honest, if I watch this, it's it's for Denise, because uh, I uh, got a big kick out of that in different world and stuff like that. So I grabbed Season 1, Volume 1 of Young Justice. 
I wish I had that. I actually would love to have that. This is an awesome cartoon. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I grabbed the Cotton Club from MGM Release. I think I got this one, but if I do, then it's a backup anyway, and that is Unforgiven. That's the two discs special edition. Also grabbed, which one is this, I wonder? Oh, three thrilling episodes from season one. Uh, X-Men Evolution. I actually really like this show. Um, unfortunately, this is episodes four to six, so I got a lot of collecting to do for that one, I guess. I picked up the complete 10th season of South Park because I'm a huge South Park fan. Complete first season of Mentalist. I actually really did love this show. Got another one of those cool little cheapies. Just had some really nice... I love the cover on this one, which is the reason I picked it up, I think. Because uh, I think I got all the movies. Maybe I don't have Night of the Blood Beast. I'm not sure. Or Devil's Partner. But this is one of those... Kind of, again, those platinum releases that used to come out back in the day. So grab that. These were a dollar each, wasn't it? So this was kind of cool. Uh, I picked up this uh, limited edition uh, digibook for the Big Lebowski. I don't have many of those actually, but I, I am actually going to be getting some. Step by step, I actually got a kick out of it. I'd never seen this before, but uh, apparently the Big Lebowski had a steel book. Had a, sorry, had a digibook. And, and it's Blu-ray, so cool. Cool, cool, cool. And although I've got the movies, I think I wanted to grab this here. And this is the uh, it's just a Transformers steelbook. There wasn't many there much there in documentary, but I did get this one here: uh, American Civil War and Nation Divided. So <laughs> a nation divided. Yes, this. This could be very prophetic. <clears throat> also grabbed season one of Homeland, which I have never seen before, but apparently my mom likes it. I'm going to check it out. And he had season three of Homeland as well, so I, I got that. They did not have season two. I don't even know how many seasons of Homeland there were. So this just had a neat little case to it. Uh, so I picked it up, and this is the uh, Mummy Collection. Uh, collector set that has Mummy 1 and 2 and Scorpion King. Uh, actually, it's kind of neat. Actually, I kind of like it. kind of dig that. And I got 7 to 9 in X-Men Evolution. So there you go. Three more episodes of that. There's a couple more yet. I picked up Sylvester and Friends, uh, which I probably already have. But uh, I uh, like the case. I have the Fall Guys Season 1. I picked up the slim case for Dinosaur. I do have the thick case. I picked up a pretty bad film, The Crow Wicked Prayer, because I do not have this. And uh, I have not seen this in ages. I remember this being pretty bad, like pretty super bad. I also grabbed uh, Gossip Girl Season 2. <laughs> the cast, true. You think with that movie, this cast would be better than this. And <clears throat> I am not even going to pretend that I didn't watch or like Gossip Girl. I did. I do like these type of shows. I, you know, One Tree Hill. I watched it. OC. I watched it. <laughs> and I'm here. I've redeemed myself by going classic here, getting a Dorothy Dandridge film, and I got the classic Carmen Jones. So that would be everything I got. So all together, let's just see here. I got like uh, around 47 uh, just in a DVD, Blu-ray alone, 
Then I got a couple games and the collectibles. So got it for an amazingly cheap price, which is awesome. I'm probably going to play Batman Arkham Origins in a little bit. And we'll be doing later on the uh, Arrow video. Because as you guys know, you were here last night. I uh, literally had to run. Had a troll commenting on my one of my posts <laughs> last night, and I so I deleted it. Then he came back and made another comment, so then I deleted that, and then I just muted him. God love the trolls. Um, at least he came in and watch. But that is everything I got here so far. You guys are so quiet. Ooh, nice. You, I love the Twitter. <laughs> I like, I've been watching, I'm watching 70s horror. You mean like Psycho? 70s Italian horror, like Psycho? Yeah, like Psycho. Stuff that you don't usually see in stores. I'm going to be interested to see that. Have you got that video up yet, or is it coming up? Vinny has a video coming up, guys, which you have to check out. If you're not watching his channel yet, then make sure you do that. I am hoping to get my Harrow's next week, actually. It's coming tonight. Yes! I have something to look forward to. All right, since we are here, I should I do some of my arrow stuff right now? Should we go right into the arrow stuff? Ooh, Vinny Center Archive. Let's do it. Since I got you guys all here, I got my tea. Let's go to the arrow stuff I got here. Uh, so this is, you know, this is my arrow collection. If you're watching last night, I apologize. Probably going to double over a bit. But I'm in a hyper mood, so we'll, so we'll go through it. Oh, wait a second. Apparently, rounding it out, I've also gotten Batman versus Dracula, which is my, which is a, kind of an extra copy of that. And Batman that I made series, Tales of the Dark Knight. I've already got the complete series, of course, but uh, I do like to buy these single editions when I just want to watch a compilation rather than grab my whole box set out. All right, now let's get to the Arrow stuff. Okay, this is the arrow stuff. This basically, for people that weren't here last night, I showed my arrow box sets, my arrow limited editions, my arrow Italian collection. So this is the rest of the arrow stuff that I got in my uh, collection here. I wanted to go through that. Basically, if somebody's still like looking order from arrow through Barnes and Noble or through the arrow website, uh, maybe these, this will give you some ideas. I was asked yesterday by, uh, actually just after I made the video, I was in the car at the time by, uh, by George, if, uh, what Arrow Academy was. He had just like gotten into the Arrow stuff. He wasn't really like uh, big on the, like under, didn't know a lot about the Arrow Academy. So Arrow Academy basically is the, it's the uh, criterion or BFI, if you want to go with that way, of Arrow, where they try to put some of their more, uh, more serious uh, titles. Some of their more like, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's some of their more foreign titles or uh, just ones that they t think, you know, get more of that kind of like arrow goes prestige with all their titles but uh these are the more uh more le less cultish more drama that type of stuff so with that being said we're going to go through a few of these right now there's force of evil with john garfield this is one of their film noirs that they did oh thank you artist branch there vinny's got it perfect uh and i love this cover and this is actually a really cool film i'm really a big fan of john garfield who's one of my favorite like oldie oldie time films which is uh humoresque does north america only get arrow video and arrow academy releases i think so i mean i haven't seen any aerodromes come here uh or uh, I, I really think aerodromes really are only done in like uh, stores now don't, don't even see them on the website very often um and uh, i don't see the arrow films collections come very often here in uh north america and i know there's arrow films because I, I got some of them but when they started out, there was Arrow Video, which was like cult horror type of stuff. There was Arrow Academy. There was, well, Arrow Academy came after. There was Nordic Noirs. Thank you. Nor, uh, Nordic Noirs, which, is, which came later too. Uh, there was Aerodrome, which was their, their budget label. And there was Arrow Films, which was like a lot of international films, like Claude Chabral and stuff like that. And then Arrow Academy came and a Nordic Noir came. And, you know, they kind of expanded from there. And now they also like... Uh, do other people's stuff like the you know for shameless to help with shameless and stuff like that too they're their distributor so the word i'm trying to look for the big combo 
Again, fantastic film. I love their noirs. Uh, speaking of which, The Big Knife with Jack Palance. Great film. I actually really like this one. Uh, great features on here. There's like a, uh, a thing on Saul Bass who was incredibly like well known for like a lot of the uh like the credit sequences title sequences and stuff he does so there is madman don't say the name because he'll come and get you the big knife release is amazing i really like this uh fun house one that they did uh i got the uh scream factory one and is jack palin still alive i don't can somebody answer that? I, I really, I don't want to say that he's not and be wrong. Uh, I don't think he is. Uh, thank you. <laughs> like, I do want to say, because how yeah, often uh, do people like kill people online when they're alive? So, th but I love this cover. And I love the features on here. So this cover, I'm pretty sure is by Rick Melton, just by the look of the girl on here. Uh, and this is the Fun House. I really like this cover. The Visitor, which I, uh, I titled like uh, Space Jesus. <laughs> I'm not jo joking. I, was, I remember the first time I saw this. Yeah, so like 13 years now. Wow. He's got that much of a presence, right? Dress to Kill by Brian De Palma. Again, I love this. And uh, oh, yeah, the Arrow Edition cover art is, is here. These are ones I did last night, but I'll do them really quickly. By the way, if you see something that you're thinking about getting in the sale or anything like that, you got any questions you want to ask me in any of these, feel free to stop me, ask me anything in any of these titles. So this is Immoral Tales by a director whose name I'm not going to pronounce. Love this film. And one of the uh, sequences from this film, there's actually originally five, there's only four in, when, it was, uh, put out, when it was commercially released, uh, was cut and was made into its own film. And that movie is The Beast, which is a very much of a fairy tale type of film. <laughs> you too have seen The Visitor, I see, Jesse. So, love my Jules Dassin. So, The Naked City cannot be without this film in your collection if you love, uh, like, film noir, if you love this type of, like, old timey kind of cool stuff. Valir in Bor Ovchik. Thank you. I'm actually going to write that down somewhere. When I'm going to like rewind this video. I'll watch the video again after and write that down. So I'll seem, seem like I know it and I'm fancy next time around. Thanks, Vinny. Mm. The Train, Burt Lancaster. Again, an incredible film. If you have not seen The Train, you got to see The Train. It's a good one. Burt Lancaster is awesome. Uh, this is an excellent release by Arrow. Uh, I think this may have been put up by Criterion. Arrow put out a better edition. Go with that. Thieves Highway, with Richard Conti and Lee J. Cobb. Uh, again, I love the cover on this one here. This is definitely better. Uh, the cover's artwork on the Arrow Academies are way better than stuff on the Criterions. I know the Criterion sale is going on right now, but this is true. And this is Brute Force with Burt Lancaster and Hume Cronin. Uh, Hume Cronin plays the, uh, I'm pretty sure he plays the, like the warden in this one, like the evil warden. Uh, good film. Sullivan's Travels, of course, with... Uh, Veronica Lake, The Manchurian Candidate, which is one I was asked about yesterday. I was asked yesterday on here, did I see The Manchurian Candidate? And I said, yes, the new one. I said, I think I have a long time ago. And I said, did it start Liv Shriver or someone like that? It was Denzel Washington. That's how wrong I was. Like, I, like that's not on here anymore, but I want you to know how wrong I was when I, uh, when I was doing that. I am not somebody that minds making an ass of himself or, or being wrong on camera. Um, I own that, man. That's, that's part of me. Wild Geese, my better half actually really loves this film. She loves these type of films. Uh, she likes these kind of like kind of warish films, you know, where a bunch of guys get together or they do something. The train is amazing. The Incredible Melting Man is a really fun, cheesy, schlocky little film. Uh, actually, great little effects by Rick Baker in this one. Uh, and I think this has the 8mm, like, 
version of it or something like that which is a super eight digest version which i actually find really cool i like to see them do more of that so deranged i actually almost bought this during this sale because i forgot that i owned it but uh excellent excellent film robert blossom is in this and he's super creepy uh, most people like nowadays remember robert blossom as the neighbor in home alone uh, but uh, this is like early Robert Blossom. If you're like a soap fan like me, <laughs> exactly, uh, then Robert Blossom actually played the Killer Zven back in the early days of Another World. <laughs> He's super creepy, man. Sisters, which is an amazing film. I, I love Sisters. I, am a, I was a huge Margot Kidder fan. I never got to meet her, unfortunately. Rest in peace, Margot Kidder. Uh, but uh, she was... She was gorgeous. Obsession. Margot Kidder's character from uh, Obsession is your favorite or Sisters? Which one? Um, Obsession. I love Obsession, actually. Actually, I did, but I will talk about them here as well because obviously that's not on. That video is not, not available. Uh, so I will be talking about the Arrow announcements after I go through these here because I'll go through these fairly fast. You guys are... Fury, which, by the way, I again, I, I almost bought this again. I gotta, I gotta look through my arrow stuff because I almost bought that. Uh, the stuff, incredible film. Uh, yeah, like rest in peace, Larry Cohen. This, he was an amazing filmmaker, extremely underrated. The car, which I, uh, which I dig. I love this inside artwork, which I may change it to, which I think some more. My uh, stepmom. She loves the car. You scared the crap out of her when she was when she was younger. I think her and my dad went to uh, the features on the car. I'll check for you. But if it gets closed, so on the car we have this is an earlier one, so we got Cal Model on here. So we got uh, audio commentary with director Elliot Silverstone, moderated by Cal Model, making a mechanical monster, special effects artist William Eldridge remembers his car remembers the car. Hitchhiked to Hell actor John Rubenstein recalls becoming victim of the car. Introduction and trailer commentary by director and car fan John Landis. Original trailer, there's an Easter egg on here. I'm not quite sure what that is. A reversible sleeve, which I just showed you. And a collector's booklet, which I'm guessing probably is not available with this anymore. But this was the original collector's booklet, and it's a huge, well, huge one, actually. I won't show the back of it. Yeah, pit, I don't know Pit Stop, actually. I really got to get that one. I like Pit Stop a lot. See, for you guys that came in for this edition, when it was just going to be like my my DVD sale haul, and all of a sudden it turns into something else. I kind of love that. We need to keep more unpredictability to these videos. Scalpel, if you don't own this, please own it. It's really, really good. It's a Southern Gothic. It is incredible. And uh, Judith Chapman... Uh, she acted in like a lot of shows. I think she acted in some soap operas too, like Young the Restless and stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure she was on like Days of Our Lives back in the day too. Uh, she might be in Days of Our Lives now. I don't know. Uh, I don't watch Days of Our Lives. Uh, but anyway, Scalpel, really, really good one. It's one of those, you know, one girl kind of looks like or is made to look like another girl type of thing. The Burbs, a movie that deserves to be in everybody's collection. This is highly underrated. Uh, Incredible film, really fun, really quirky. One of my favorite Tom Hanks films. Right up there at the Money Pit. I love the Money Pit as well. Nobody talks about that one, but I, I just did. So somebody just talked about it. Ooh, do I remember which double double feature with? I don't actually. Um, see, I had to get this sexy one here. I, you know, if there's different features, any of I'll be honest with you, I'll, I'll probably. Dear did what was it? Dear did Delata. That would be a good double feature for the Burbs, actually, because they're for the Burbs <laughs> for uh, <clears> the <throat> first scalpel because they both got kind of like a Southern Gothic aesthetic to them. That's what I probably said. <clears throat> Dominique. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Dominique is actually, Dominique's a much better one because Dominique actually has a Southern Gothic feel to it. I haven't watched Dear Dead Delata yet, but. Uh, it doesn't get a great rating, but uh, <clears throat> I picked it up because I like I wanted to slip and I want to see what it's like. Uh, the Last American Virgin. This is a great film. 
uh, you think it's going to be a sexploitation type of film, and it's a film that breaks your heart by the end of it. It really does. And so much, so much more depth to that film than you would imagine for uh, that type of movie. Again, very much based, oh yeah, the end kills you, man. Very much based on the Lemon Popsicle series that was done previously. Um, it was kind of a remake of, the, of that. Big Trouble in Little China. I just love this movie. I, I'm so sad that this, you know, it's such a hard movie to market, so it didn't do well when it was in theater. <clears throat> but neither did The Thing, and now they're all classics, so John Cartman got to show them, didn't he? Comedy of Terrors by Jacques Trenot. Of course, it's a Vincent Price one. Which one? The uh, Big Trouble? I'll check for you. Big Trouble looks to be Region B, actually. So it looks to be Region Locked. Um, uh, but the uh, DVD might be so. But it's, it's a, I think it's a double one, right? Is this a DVD, Blu-ray? No, it's just Blu-ray. Here's the uh, other artwork, by the way, just, just in case you want to you wanna see it. I, I prefer this one, like the original one. It's a shame that they're having some issues with their booklets because they got really good booklets. <clears throat> your, tell your friend Region Free will change their life. I don't have Spider Baby. I keep putting on my list of ones to get. Uh, I love Jack Hill's Spider Baby. I have met um, Sid Haig and, uh, it's, and I actually told him that was one of my favorites and I still don't own it. So... I'm like a phony. But I really need to get that one. And Arrow put out an amazing release of Spider Baby, by the way, if you're a fan of that film. They put out the definitive like edition of that. So I love this cover. I actually really like this film. Uh, and it's uh, super fun, kind of cheesy, and hey, let's talk movies. That is The Exterminator. <clears throat> so if you've never seen this, one of James Glickenhouse's like, revenge classics, Exactly. Is your friend there with you? Because if they are, it will change your life. Oh, I, I, I do listen to the Moose podcast. I don't know if I... I'll go back and I'll re-listen that one, actually, if I haven't. Because I missed a few. I just listened to the new podcast, the Just of This One, actually, without Brian. It's uh, Stephanie and uh, the guy from, uh, I think, Supporting Characters, which is a really great podcast, too, by the way. I haven't checked it out. Hound of the Baskervilles, a rare hammer film from uh, Arrow Video. The classic Tinto brass film Caligula that almost ruined his career, but actually I kind of dig this. Definitely, it's, it's really worth it. A region free player. It's a region free 4K, oh nice. Well, actually, 4K is region free anyway. But Blu-rays, you know, are, are not going to be region free in 4K. So you want to make sure you get like a, a good player. Black Mama, White Mama. Clig, I think might be. Yep, Clig, yeah, is region free. This is like a, I think it's like a three disc set too. So yeah, it's like a three disc set here. We got like, no, two disc set. Make my alarm again. <laughs> Next up is Black Mama, White Mama. Really like that film. I'd forgotten like the way it went. So when we get to the ending of Black Mama, White Mama, we were both shocked. Um, it didn't go in the way we thought it was going to go. Next up is Hellgate. This is not the original. This is a re-release Hellgate that they brought out afterwards. Like, uh, I'm, this is super cheesy, but it's kind of fun. And if you want, if you're ever wondered what it would be like if the if Horshack from uh, Welcome at Cotter wa was a sex symbol to all the chicks, uh, this is the movie you want to see. This is going to answer the question. Next up is the fantastic Bound, which I really like. Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly are lovers, and if you need to know anything else after that, I'm sorry, but. That should be a selling point right there. Though this is a great cast. Joe Panleone is in this one. Uh, actually, there's a, a role. The guy that played Stabler on Law and Order SVU is inbound as well, actually. Next up is the most underrated Toe Pooper film. Tobe, Toby? We'll go Tobe. Uh, Eaten Alive.
which is awesome by the way and the features are incredible on this and this one is region a and b by the way so you have so nobody has any excuse for not getting eaten alive oh Vinny, you got to see it man it's got that awesome opening line from robert england my name is buck and i'm not going to finish the line but you can kind of finish it it rhymes with buck we'll go with that there we go uh killer clowns from outer space now when this came out uh there was this and there's like a steelbook edition of this but i like the artwork on this better than I like the artwork on the steelbook so i picked this one up the steelbook artwork was right here pretty much like that a little bit it's definitely a classic it's it's got neville brand and marilyn burns um i'm a huge fan of neville brand He's just one of those like actors that I've always liked. Oh, definitely. I mean, like, Eaten Alive Scolder was done right after he did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And obviously, anything coming after Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not going to do well. Uh, because the, the, the bar is set super high, right? Uh, but I thought Eaten Alive was really fun. You got Marilyn Burns back again from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You got Neville Brand's fantastic character actor. Oh, he is super crazy in that film. Uh, and he, he chews the scenery. Like, and he's perfect. Uh, you got like uh, oh, there's a few actors. I'm not sure if it's William Finley's in it or not. Uh, but I know that uh, we got Robert England in it in a very charismatic role. Well, it depends. When did she see it? Or maybe she's got like a few. I got a fear of clowns. I'm not. I don't have to find killer clowns scary. But still, uh, if you see it in under the right circumstances, maybe I don't know. Or fear of like cotton candy. Uh, White of the eye. If you do not own this movie, this is the edition to get. Not the Scream Factory. If you don't own it and you're like on the fence, like, should I get this or should I get the Scream Factory edition? No, you should get this edition. This is the weight of the eye that should be in your collection. And if I haven't said it enough, it's because there is a feature link to our long documentary. Yeah, Jesse, this is the one. It's got the documentary on the director. And I will tell you right now, the director's life is fascinating. It is an incredibly well done documentary. You owe it to yourself to own this one. You owe it to yourself to watch this documentary. You will watch it more than once. It's a really, really good documentary. Next up is Black Exploitation, and it's good Black Exploitation too. It is JD's Revenge. Uh, Louis Gossett is in this. Louis Gossett Jr. is in this one. Of course, uh, this stars uh, Glenn Turman. Uh, who else is in this one here? Joan Pringles in this. Uh, great stuff. Music by Robert Prince. If you have not seen this one, it's kind of like one of those uh, supernatural ones. And uh, Glenn Turman does a great job kind of playing dual roles. Next up is, is there a versatile cover for JD's Revenge? There's always a versatile cover, Vinny. You just got to ask me. It's actually pretty cool, too. To possess a man's soul, make love to his woman, and get the revenge he craved. What's really comical is there is a movie called Hollywood Shuffle, which was done by uh, Robert Townsend, I think. And there's a sequence where he's playing like in a black exploitation film. <clears throat> you got to get the movie, Vinny. It's awesome. It's a really awesome movie. And he's playing like this super, like uh, this black exploitation character. I got to get my. Uh, I can't even do it. You just got to. You watch Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle. I think it's on Criterion. I, I got mine, actually. I didn't get any of mine from Zavi because Zavi. Zavi shipping to me. I bought a, a DVD, a Blu-ray from them. It took two months to get. So I haven't got a lot from them since. Some of the Zavi stuff is cheaper, though. It's just I don't trust their shipping. Uh, the stuff that I did get came in two days. So that's pretty good. Uh, so I do try to go straight to Arrow if I can. It goes straight to the company. And uh, I'm. Sh there's a better chance, if it's a pre-order or something like that, that uh, I'll, I'll get it through. The, I'll get the booklet like with that. Uh, my better half has said no more sales for me for a couple months, so I can't get anything. Um, so Mark the Devil, if you don't have this one, it's a really great film. That's our original right there. Uh, you guys know him, of course, from Salem's Lot, where he played the vampire. Uh, there is a great, great, fantastic... Yeah, actually, I watched your video, PMAC. Uh, you got yours fast, though, didn't you? You got yours pretty good. The dented guy. That's the thing. That happened with my, uh, with my hammer horror. But, you know, you got to take your chances sometimes with that type of stuff. Oh, did you watch the documentary yet? 
the documentary on this one it is amazing. It's uh, basically, it talks about like the shift from, uh, in British horror from, uh, from basically what we're, what we're used to seeing. Uh, like the like the gothic stuff into this more realistic, more uh, more intense kind of uh, British horror. So that you're talking about like if you're a fan like the Norman J. Warren stuff, or you like Pete Walker, you know, you're gonna hear a lot about them in that in this documentary. So if you're picking up the Norman J. Warren box set, or you from Indicator, or if you picked up like a bunch of their stuff from Vinegar Syndrome, you got to get this one. So there you go, guys. If you picked up Norman J. Warren's, like you if you went and picked up Satan Slaves and any of those and bloody new year this this is your companion piece all right next up is coffee which is my favorite pam greer film I made a mistake when i was on there last time and i uh, said oh definitely check it out man trust me it's an interesting hour and a half This is the best Pam Greer film. <laughs> I am not surprised because do they work with Dark Force Entertainment and places like that? Because, you know, because, you know, the Zero Buys. My, this probably is one of my favorite Nico Mastriakis films. And yes, that is Kelly Maroney from Night of the Comet on here. So uh, you want that for Kelly Maroney alone? Porky's. Again, the best edition of this one. I love the way this is done. Looks like one of those, you know, magazines. Looks like we've got a consensus with coffee here. Everybody loves the coffee, even though I'm drinking the tea. Invasion of the Body Snatcher is the best edition of this film to get. And if you don't have this one, I got to say, pick this up. This is a really great edition. This, this is, of course, the 1970s. Invasion of the Body Statue done by Philip Kaufman. It's not a remake, really. It's you can kind of think of it as sort as kind of a pseudo sequel since we do get to see Kevin McCarthy at the beginning of the film. You want the other cover on this one? That's the, sold on the cover. Is that it? It's the original cover, just of any. It is the Invasion of the Body Snatcher. It's a classic. And this is a really good one. Not only is it a great transfer of the film with a really great edition, but there are some amazing features. It really does a deep dive into the film, which is what you want. And if you were ever thinking of like a reviewing Invasion of the Body Snatchers down the road sometime, this is the disc that you want because you'll you'll get like some quality like uh, like st talk on it. You're gonna get Kim Newman talking about this. You're gonna like listen to Ben Wheatley, Norman J. Warren uh, talking about this as well. Just super, super cool. Vinny, you need this. You, you so need this film. Let's look at this. Look at these. Look at how many features are there. You spend like a weekend just going through that stuff, man. One of my favorite spaghetti westerns, Day of Anger. As you can see, I turned it around to the uh, cool cover. Like the, was an okay cover that they had was like, this, you know, Lee Van Cleef one right there, but I, I kind of like this more. And if you have not seen Day of Anger, this is like a three disc set. A uh, bunch of stuff on here. We got like two versions of the film, the original Italian theatrical version and the shortened version, which is what people would see around here all the time. One of my favorite movies, To Live and Die in L.A. with a very young Willem Dafoe. The runtime on a day of anger. I'll check it out for you right now, Vinny. It is, well, it is 86 minutes for the original theatrical cut, but the uncut is 114 minutes. So that's quite a big difference in the cut of the film. So, uh, I'm checking them out. This is like, I'm looking for, I saw a couple of unboxings for the, horror the american horror project volume two huge difference like it's it's a big difference i mean if you like spaghetti westerns day of anger is is a fantastic spaghetti western and you really need to see the actually i gotta do that i gotta talk to jace actually i gotta, I gotta talk to him soon i'm such a slacker but lately it's been crazy it has been crazy lately so that that's the only that's the only reason i love doing the we did that, that james bond stream i had a blast 
Jace is so knowledgeable about this stuff. I'm a, I'm the, uh, I'm the eye candy. <laughs> that would be sad eye candy. <laughs> yeah, um, you got a man. That's a good one. Uh, not normally. I mean, I've gotten stuff where the case has been broken. Uh, like the one of the DVDs that got like arrow ago. Only once that ever happened. Was, like a couple years ago, this was part was broken right off. Uh, I could have complained and got something. I wish I probably should have done, but I didn't, right? Oh, I would love to see a Trinity box set, man. To Live and Die in L.A. Again, one of my favorite songs from a movie, too. Little known fact, I listen to the song To Live and Die in L.A. every time before I make one of these videos. That is the song I listen to. Pumps me up. Damaged artwork is, 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 is hard. I mean, like you... Yeah, I would. Like, if the artwork was damaged, stuff like that. Uh, definitely, you know, contact them. Remo Williams. Super fun. Oh, I tell Jace for sure. I am still doing it. Uh, and we'll do it actually soon. I'll, I'll try to get it within the week or so. So. Okay, I, I need counterfeit money, Jesse. For the stuff, have you seen how much stuff I bought in the last month? I need counterfeit money. Not everybody can be like a fancy Uber driver, like uh, like Vinny over there. Some of us you know, don't have those uh, amenities. <laughs> uh, Remo Williams. This has a great documentary too, by the way. I got this one. I watched this one on Christmas Day, the year that I got it. Uh, it has a great documentary all about 80s action films. If you like 80s action films, there's a fantastic documentary called Remo, Rambo, Reagan, and Reds. The 80s action movie explosion runs about nine minutes long. It's a dive into 80s action. And uh, I, I'm from the 80s. I think 80s action is the best era of action. Next up is a classic runaway train. Again, an amazing film that would have done way, way better if it wasn't a canon film, to be totally honest with you. I think it got slighted because of that. But still, that is an incredible movie. I love Remo Williams. I mean, the fact that they had Joel, that they had uh, Joel Gray as the uh, Asian character was, was different, I guess. But hey, it's a different era. Uh, Runaway Train is a fantastic film. Another uh, cool, like, Nico Mastrakis film with Oliver Reed and uh, George Kennedy. Did you really? Uh, and that is Hard to Kill. I'm a big like theater geek, so that's where I knew Joel Gray from before films mostly. Uh, this is like actually a fun little action film. Um, I enjoyed it. I mean, like uh, it's Brian Thompson. Uh, you know, he's in stuff like he's in a lot of stuff, man. Uh, I think he's in Cobra and stuff like that. I think he even say Cobra in the back there actually. Was, um, Chud. Anybody know what Chud stands for? Without like googling it. I don't know either. I think it's like cam cannibalistic, humanoid, underground dwellers. See how close I am. Do they say? They don't say, damn it. I'm going to get cannibalistic, humanoid, underground dwellers. I could be wrong. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, right, we got it. Uh, uh, movie by Mike Figgis that I actually really like. Stormy Monday, uh, Sting is in this one. I'm a huge Sting fan. I remember I had his like original uh, solo album, which I think was like German the Blue Turtle, something like that was called. Um, so even though all the words to Russians. After this, guys, we are going to talk about the Arrow announcements and stuff too. This chat, yes, I don't have budget chat actually, because Vestron's videos are too expensive. Um, all right, there is The Addiction, which is an amazing Abel Ferrer film. If you don't have it, got to pick it up. Chud, Chud, it's it's comedic. It's not, it has nothing, there's no Chud in, in Chud 2. Forget, <laughs> there's about as many Chuds in Chud 2 as there is like Trolls in Troll 2. Zero. There is zero. Oh, dude, this is a great release. Uh, there's like some great like... Uh, you do this like talking with the vampires where they talk to uh, Frere and Chris Walk and Lily Taylor. Uh, they talk to the composer on here and talk to a bunch of people. It's a really good documentary. Uh, I'm going to tempt you, Vinny. 
Just look at this. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm even going to like see. I know they got like an alternate artwork, don't they? Which probably isn't that great, but still. This is the alternate artwork. That's probably what you used to see. But I actually like this art. I actually really like this artwork. Christopher Walken stands out. Like he's got a small part, but it's an important part in the film. <laughs> I do remember that episode. When Simpsons were good. The Killers. This is the classic one. This is not the classic one. This is Lee Marvin one, right? I think so. Yep, Lee Marvin and Angie Dickinson. I love me some Angie Dickinson. This is the original classic Burt Lancaster, Ava Gardner one. I actually like this one better. Um, I love which cover. This cover right here? Or this cover right here? Or both these covers? I love the fact they put out both of the Killers films. Uh, the alternate artwork for the Killers actually is really good as well. This one right here. Which is kind of the old school one. Ronald Reagan, yeah, it's the... His last one of his last films, I think, and his last films, and his only film that he played a bad guy in, like like le, le, or the last film, like but he played a bad guy in. Some people would consider that he played a bad guy in real life. I, I'm not sure sure about that, but he gets a gets a bad rap. <laughs> Network again. I love this movie. This was the one that was broke, actually. I switched it out for a different... No, it's still broke. I'll show you right here. See that? And that is Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Is Network Region locked? I... Yep, it is, unfortunately, Vinny. There, tell your friend he needs Network. Not only has Network got this on it, but also has the, uh, the director's... Uh, Sid, I think the Sidney LeMay director's episode on here as well. Uh, there's a bunch of features. There's a cool making of on here, too. But I always... Anytime that I look at the Arrow stuff, I always go and check to see if they have a, a, the episode of the director. I really love that show, The Directors, where they do like a, an hour-long dive into the director. You are a good friend. I'm going to stay your friend, Vinny. My birthday is March 31st. Uh, <laughs> Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah, a really fun film. It's got George Clooney in it. Uh, Big Breasts of Tomatoes go to the beach and take their tops off. That's where you got to go. Tie Collector. Man, it will change your life. Region Free will change your life. Trust me on this. Phantom of the Paradise. A musical that I severely love. Paul Williams is a genius. He is a musical genius. There's a 72-minute interview with Paul Williams on this one, by the way, which is super awesome. Tomato <laughs> Tomatoes. In Revenge of the Killer Tomatoes, you get to meet FP. And I think my kids actually have an FP doll, which is Fuzzy to F FT, which is a Fuzzy Tomato. There were around four Killer Tomatoes movies, followed by a Killer Tomatoes cartoon series, by the way. There was rumored at one point to have that they were thinking about doing a Killer Tomatoes TV series. Barbara McNulty. Oh, oh, you mean uh, Jessica Harper? Oh. I love Jessica Harper. You've, you've never seen Killer Tomatoes? Oh, dude, you gotta see some. Oh, see you later, Vinny, and uh, enjoy your Sunday. I'm almost done here with these, and then we're gonna talk about the new stuff. City of the Living Dead. Who doesn't love some good old Lucio Fulci? This is obviously an early one. I'd like to see like a big box edition of this one done around. Have a great day there, Vinny. Make sure you check out Vinny's video tonight. Vinny's video tonight when he does his unboxing of the stuff that he picked up today. So he will be dropping a video tonight and make sure you check it out. If you're not subscribed to his channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button so you know when the new videos are coming. See, I'm getting it down. I just can't get it down from my own channel. Christopher Watkins, King of New York. Love this movie. Again, this is Bill Frere. Lawrence Fishburne's in this one. It's got a great cast, actually. Lawrence Fishburne's in this one. Chris Walken, David Caruso. Uh, oh, that's right, though. I'm so behind, Jesse. I'm so behind on this stuff. I can only hope that they put out, like, 
another unlimited edition. I've been liking the fact that they've been doing that lately, like putting out some unlimited editions, just taking the books or booklets out. That's the only way I got the house collection coming, on, uh, coming by the way. This is awesome. I love this movie. Are you ready for weird? Like, really weird? Now, this movie here that I'm about to show you, you can double feature with the 1970s-ish film House. Uh, not the house from, with William Cat, but the really weird one. Uh, and that is The Happiness of the Katakairos. So this is by Takashi Mikai. And if you have not seen this, I do not know how to explain this to you. It is a uniquely weird film. And I will show you. Oh, I, I, I'll talk about that. I, that. There's one of those that I'm actually very excited about, and you may have just mentioned it. Uh, so next up is Retaliation. I love this cover, by the way. It's got a very anime uh, kind of manga type cover to it. And last but not least is Foxy Brown, which is Pam Greer goodness again. Still prefer coffee, but Foxy Brown makes a good double feature with coffee. And let us now talk about those releases. Art thou ready? I'm hyper today, guys. I'm really hyper today. I'm not sure if it's showing or not. It probably is. Probably showing too much. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm super hyper. All right, come on here. So there is a bunch of stuff coming from Arrow from the for the month of September. Come on, come on. Here, video. And I just got the, okay, so I'll go by the regions. So ones that are gonna be North American region, it, okay, I'll go with by the British region. So there's only one that's just, that's, oh, that's British region only. And that one is a box set. It's a box set of, uh, Oh, I'll talk to you later. Have a great evening there. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. A box set of Maribava. There are, I think, seven, at least seven films on the, in the set. It's called Macabre Visions. Uh, apparently, Arrow's looking to get re, get the rights to Maribava. Uh, the rights are going to be coming up at the end of this year. Hopefully, they'll get the rights back, and maybe we'll see some big editions like with the Argentos that we saw come out uh, like last year and this year so they're going to be doing the macabre visions one and it's uh it's got on it black sunday uh the girl who knew too much black sabbath kill baby kill five Do five dolls for an august moon bay of blood barren blood lease in the devil and rabid dogs so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine so it's nine nine movies so probably nine discs then uh i got like six of those five or six of those so i'm not quite sure if i'm gonna get it Depends on the book and like if we put any extra features in there. That's the thing. That just it's I got so many of them. Now Hussar Die is a uh, is a dual region one, and uh, that is a fantastic Jello. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend it. It's got George Lazenby from like uh, oh from the uh, movie On uh, Your Majesty's Secret Service. My God, it's my favorite James Bond movie. I forgot the name of it. Uh, it's one of those days. Hussar Die, check it out. If you like Jalo, you're going to like this film. The Prey, which is a kind of a fun little slasher film. And uh, now, now Hussar Die isn't coming to the UK. That's actually only uh, North American. Anita Strindberg. Oh, God. She is extremely gorgeous. The Prey is a really fun one. And uh, kind of a cheesy slasher film, but I enjoy it. And last but not least, my favorite announcement that Arrow is coming out with. The Hills of Eyes 2. They are doing The Hills of Eyes 2. I love this crappy sequel. I really do. It's super cheesy. It's padded like hell to the point where everybody that's in the film has a flashback. The dog has a flashback. Uh, I am not joking. The dog has a flashback because they're out to get revenge now, sort of. Uh, they're going there because basically they're doing some like, uh, they're just like on some motocrossing, something like that. Um, You, I was, for me, it was like, yes. I thought that they'd put it in the Hills of Eyes. 
that the because the Hills of Eyes Part Two was like not exactly a critically acclaimed classic, that they, it might get a regular release, but I didn't think it would get like like a deluxe release, and that would have bugged me because I have the Hills of Eyes deluxe release. Actually, that is the only Arrow that I ever bought the day that it came out because I was up I was in London at the time. You can't not have a limited edition box set because I got a limited edition box set number one. So I don't want to put a regular edition next to my limited edition box set number one. I need that limited edition box set number two. I'm, I'm still looking forward to that. I'll probably buy it and hold off watching it till October. Oh, have a great day, Ty Collector. Make sure you take a, check out Ty Collector's channel. He has a really good channel, by the way, guys. See, that's the thing. If you got part one, there's no way you can't, you're not going to get the collector's edition of part two. People are going to say it and they're going to go, oh, why, why, why part two? Like, I even said it. I said, why, why do part two? And it's like, wait, I want part two. I do. It's super cheesy. It's fun. Um, and it, you got the poster. You can put your part two poster next to your part one poster. Mine's still in my, my box because I'm not moved over to Morocco yet. And I'm going to put some of my posters there. I'm actually looking forward to getting like glass thing and putting up Hills of Eyes 1 and Hills of Eyes 2. Those posters, those, like whether you like the movie or not, it's got an awesome poster too. So yeah, that's that's going to be fun. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun actually. Is there, wait a minute, part three doesn't count. You're talking about Mind Ripper, aren't you? You're talking about Mind Ripper is not really Hills of Eyes. <laughs> there is no Hills of Eyes 3. Uh, it's, it's loosely... <laughs> Very loosely, Hills of Ice 3. But I guess if they can put out the house, part three, the horror show, then I guess they can put out Hills of Ice part three, Mind Ripper, and Super Collector's Edition as well. I don't know. I love the first two. They're connected. They, have, they make sense. I don't know if I buy the third one again. I got like the code red edition of Mind Ripper. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I have ever watched Mind Ripper uh, since, I saw, since I originally had it back in the day. So uh, I, don't, I have not cracked out my code red that one at all. Somebody asked me about it. What do you think of Mind Ripper? I said, I don't know. Uh, I really didn't watch it uh, since I picked it up. But uh, I will one of these days. You can't watch everything. And I got way even more to watch now. Anyway, at 67 minutes, we got through my entire haul, which is about like 50 DVDs. And... I'm so... Is it like super geeky that that I love these things? It is, right? It's pretty super geeky. Oh, the Omen Collection. I am down. So down with the Omen Collection. Right now, like, the Omen Collection is the one to beat for Halloween right now. We know what Kinos are, so Kinos got some good stuff, but it's not. It's nothing that's going to beat the Omen Collection. Uh, we don't quite, we don't know yet. We know what September's is for Arrow. We don't know what, know what October's is for Arrow. Um, and there's also that mysterious box set coming from Vinegar Syndrome. So at this point, the Omen Collection has, you know, it's the big thing for Halloween. We'll see if anything can come out and beat the Omen Collection from Halloween. Um, it's, I mean, they announced such good stuff, Jesse, to be honest with you, that if they're announcing stuff at the Comic-Con, like how big is it, uh, that the stuff that they're announcing at the Comic-Con, because... Seriously. Uh, they, they usually do announce... Oh, perfect. Thanks, zombies. They do announcements every year at the Comic-Con. So I'm thinking if that Omen box set and like those other ones are, are, are the ones they're doing now, they must have something really big for the Comic-Con. The thing that would blow me away the most, the thing that would like super get me, I would, I've been killing for a, a decent Friday the 13th box set to come out. Because for me, th that that has not happened yet. Uh, I, I got the Friday the, the Blu-ray set for like 20 bucks back there. Uh, I did not buy the tin set. I thought it looked horrible. Uh, but uh, I would kill for a nice Friday the 13th set with some uncut stuff there, with maybe some branching if, uh, if possible. Uh, Friday the 13th is what I'm hoping for. It's probably not going to be it, but uh, it's got to be something big. For them to put out the stuff that they put out there and the... Yeah, uh, you know, 
I think Scream Factory has the chance this year to to maybe grab Halloween. It'll be it's been a while since they've done it. Uh, last time, I don't. My Bloody Valentine was a, would be a great release. It wouldn't be the mind blowing release though. Uh, last time ha that Scream Factory won Halloween for me, uh, the very last time that they did it was back when um, they were uh, when they were when they did like the Halloween box set. Like ironically. Uh, what, what sale? Well, we weren't talking so much sale. We talked about the sale that I got a bunch of uh, I got a bunch of movies and games and stuff. We went through my the rest of my Arrow collection. This was a big video actually. Uh, we talked about the new Arrow releases that are coming out. I, I definitely want the Hills of Eyes two box set, and uh, we're curiously wondering what the new Scream Factories that are going to be announced the San Diego Comic Con are going to be. That is an amazing box. I mean, like, that's there in the background there somewhere. And I, I love my, my screen box. Up. Anyway, at 70 minutes, I need another cup of tea because obviously I don't seem hyper enough now. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a great evening. If you just j dropped in or came in earlier on, uh, <laughs> go check back the beginning. I picked up a bunch of stuff today. I went to, a, uh, to my record shop who had this, like, dollar sale and I got some awesome stuff, including these uh, super cool puzzles and this HMV exclusive Dexter bobblehead. Because you got to channel your inner, inner serial killer. Criterion normally does sales. Uh, well, Criterion themselves, they have flash sales. You're, I think you mean the Barnes & Noble sale. The Barnes & Noble sale usually goes on twice a year. Once right now, this one's going on until August the 4th. Thank you, Scalder, actually, for letting me know that because I wasn't sure. And uh, there is another uh, Barnes & Noble Criterion sale that usually goes on around November. And that usually goes on for about a month as well. So those are the two big ones. Criterion themselves, you watch on their website, sign up for their newsletter type of thing. They have, like, flash sales every once in a while. The last flash sale I remember was in February because my um, better RF actually picked me up. The uh, the Ingmar, Ingmar Bergman cinema box set, which is awesome, and if you are interested in Ingmar Bergman at all, it is definitely the set to get. Have a great evening. I am Aaron. You guys are the movie club. You guys are awesome. I'm super hyper today. I'm not quite sure why, but I like it. And um, enjoy your Sunday. Pick up some stuff from the Barnes and Noble sale. There's there's Arrow video to choose from, and there's Criterion's to choose from. There's way too much. I. Uh, 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 but I'm broke, so I'm not getting anything else. But I do have, that being said, guys, I have Arrow videos coming next week, hopefully. Fingers crossed that they come next week. So we'll be, we'll be unboxing those, looking into those sets and uh, singles, and uh, we'll have some fun. Later on. Find you on Instagram? My name is Charm007. If you, like, follow me on Instagram, I'll follow you back.